This is question 150, evaluate reverse Polish notation. We are told to evaluate the value of an arithmetic expression in reverse Polish notation. The valid operators are plus, minus, asterisks or multiply, and forward slash or divide. Each operand may be an integer or another expression. Note that the division between two integers should truncate towards zero. It is guaranteed that the val given reverse Polish notation expression is always valid. This means that the expression would always evaluate to a result and there will not be any division by zero operation. We're given a token list uh, with two, one, plus three and asterisks. And the output is nine because two plus one is three and then three times three is nine. For example, two, we're given a token list with four, 13, five, forward slash and plus. Uh, you do 13 over five and then it gets um, floored, so you return a 2 as opposed to a 3, and you don't return a decimal. So you get 2 for this, for this value, and then that plus the 4, which is 6. Uh, for the last example, a little complicated, or just looks complicated, uh, but you do 9 plus 3. You use this plus symbol right here, and then you do that sum times the negative 11. Then whatever you get from there, you do 6 over that value that value you get from dividing. And whatever you get from there, you do that times 10 and plus 17 and then plus 5. So as I mentioned, you do 9 plus 3 first, so 12 times the negative 11. Whatever you get from this sum, you do 6 over that value, and then whatever you get from this entire item, you do 10 times that value. Once you get that, once you get all of this, you do all of that plus 17, and then at the end you just do plus 5. Okay, so let's go into the explanation and then the coding portion of this problem. Okay, so let's go into the explanation of question 150, evaluate reverse Polish notation. How do you solve this problem? Well, you're given a token list of 2, 1, plus 3, and asterisk. This is the same example as the one in leak code. Now, I've written it out in this format <coughs> where it's just a list. So we're going to go through every value in the list. And I'm also going to actually use a stack here. The stack is because I will be adding each element that I uh, that I see into a stack if it's a number. If it's not a number, then I pop two values and then do the operation on them. And then whatever result I get, I put it back into the stack. So in this case, since I have a two and it's a number, I add it into the stack. Sorry. So I add it into the stack. Now, there's nothing else I can do here, so I just move on to the next value in my list, which is one. Now one is also uh, integer, and so I add that as well to the stack. Next, I move on to the third value in this list, which is plus, and now I see that it's an operator. And what I do is I pop the two values from my stack now. So the first time I call pop, it's gonna pop up. It's gonna pop the one, and the second time I call it, it's gonna pop the two. I wanna make sure that it's the second value that I popped plus the first value, and that goes with any other operator as well. Uh, this is because when we get to a point where you do sub, uh, subtraction or division, uh, it's gonna make a little bit of a difference. So let's say you have a divide in this case, it would be two over one, uh, not one over two, right? Uh, subtraction to well, one minus two, it's two minus one. And that can make a big difference in the output result. And that's because we're also inputting these values in that order. So as you might remember from the example, it was two plus one, not one plus two. It was three, well, in this case, three times three it just looks the same, but it's actually the first value that comes in the list times the second value. So in our case, we're gonna pop the two values, the two and the one, but this two will be popped second. So we're gonna make it so that the second value minus the first, or plus the first value in this case, uh, is the output. And so we compute two plus one after popping them. 
and whatever result you get you put it back into the stack which is three now you move on again and you notice that it's a three and it's a number so all you do is put it into the stack and then move on again and you get to a multiplication now you do what you did before which is pop the two values which are the three and the three from the stack only the only the top two values if there are multiple values beneath this you don't care about it you just pop the two values here and then you compute it and then put it back into the stack then there could be an operator after this but when you get to that point all you do is pop the two values again and that would be another value underneath this if there was one uh, but in this case you're multiplying so you pop the three and the three and you compute what three times three is and then push it back into the stack now since there's nothing else to do here all you do is pop the top value or pop just pop the value in the stack and it should return the value that you're looking for and that's pretty much it very easy to solve this question all right let's get into the coding portion of this problem all right so let's start coding the solution to this problem i mentioned that we will be using a stack here so i'm going to initialize the stack and then we are also going to be looping through the values in our list so for token and tokens and now i can i need to do a check right i need to make sure that the value i'm looking at is either a number or not a number uh, a good way to do this would just be to do something like if token is not in and then just pass in all the different items that you want to use it to test with so if the token is in neither of these items since we're given it in the form of a string we can just do it this way but if it's not in any of these four items then you, well if it's not then all you do is put append it to the stack <coughs> so you just do append that stack but you can't just do token because this token is in a string format so first you need to change it into an int and then put it into the stack this way you don't have to convert anything later on um, and then your output also is not going to have any sort of change that you can have to make so i can do something like int of the token and that's it and now if the token is not an operator in this case then what do you do well we mentioned that you need to pop the two values from the top from the stack right the first two values that come up in the stack so a good way to do this would be just to be create two variables and do stack.pop when you call it first that this stack.pop maps to the x and then you can do another stack.pop that maps to the y i mentioned that the it needs to be the second value minus plus divide or multiply this uh, the first value so in our case, when we do the operation, we need to make sure that it's y plus x, y minus x, y divided by x, y multiplied by x, not x multiplied by y or any of the other operators. So now all you do is check if token is equal to a multiply, right? Because if it's not any of these, then we know that uh, it's a number and so we need to Oh, it's, a, it's an operator so now we need to check if the token is multiplication if it is then you just do stack dot append y times x right else if if token is equal to a plus then you do stack dot append y plus x else token is equal to minus then you do stack dot append y minus x and lastly is equal to divide now this is a little trickier because you can't just do stack dot append y over x uh, one of the reasons for that is that the output is not going to be uh, valid just because they're looking for something that truncates towards zero uh, in our case it's not going to happen and it could be incorrect so a good way to do this would be to first convert it into a float right and then convert it back into an int 
that helps floor the value. And now, once we go through this whole loop and all the values are uh, accounted for in this in this list, then all you do is return stacked up pop, and that's it. And the stacked up pop is going to pop the last value that is there, which should be the only value in the stack. And that's it. So let's run this code. Okay, and let's submit this code as well. So the issue here is that I'm doing the float of the entire division. I should actually be doing the float of just the first value here over the x. Yeah. So I'll run it again and then submit the solution. And there we go. 